This morning on NNN AM, reclaiming Ryan Field, how community members are bidding to bring home a piece of Northwestern history. Plus, celebrating creativity, we take you along to a monthly event for Evanston artists. And springing into shape, three fitness fanatics join the show with some tips and tricks to stay active while on the school grind. Those stories and more on NNN AM. It's your morning news right, right now. now. Good morning. You're watching NNN AM. I'm Max Rothfeder. And I'm Lena Peterson. We're coming to you this morning from the fourth floor newsroom of the McCormick Foundation Center, just outside our new studio. But we've got a lot to cover, so let's dive right in into the news making waves this morning. The Evanston City Council recently approved the establishment of a community response program. Working in tandem with the Evanston Police Department, this initiative will respond to non-life-threatening 911 calls. The Community Response Program will be housed within the Parks and Recreation Department and staffed by responders trained in domestic violence and de-escalation techniques. Evanston Police Department first responders will continue to respond to critical dispatch calls, while the Community Response Initiative will handle those non-violent disputes, noise complaints, and other minor offenses. The measure will tentatively take effect beginning this June. On February 21st, the Northwestern University Graduate Workers Union reached a tentative agreement with the university. The agreement includes a 21% pay increase, additional health care coverage, and more support for international grad students. A um, fund the university will establish and will contribute to every year for not just visa renewal fees, NU and NUGW disagree on who counts as a member of the bargaining unit. As per the tentative agreement, every member of the bargaining unit will receive a $1,000 bonus. Their current list of who's in the bargaining unit is about 2,400 people. Um, the union uh, maintains it should be closer to around um, 2,900 or 3,000. NUGW members will vote on the tentative agreement next week, with results to come out later this month. Ryan Field may be coming down, but not everything inside will be going to waste. NNN's Logan Schigiano has more on how one local organization is helping Wildcat fans keep parts of the historic stadium in their lives for years to come. I got one of the Wildcat seat backs and a, a sign from the West Stands. Larry Lotterette has been a diehard Northwestern football fan since his freshman year in 1988. Thanks, have a good day. So when Evanson's rebuilding exchange launched its Ryan Field sale last Friday, he couldn't wait to get his hands on history. Just having a couple of things to remember up by and uh, stock up the man cave a little bit uh, more with uh, memorabilia. Something I thought was really fascinating were these uh, press box telephones which I thought was cool. From salvaged stadium seats to concession signs to this 50-foot tarp up for $1,000, the opening of the Rhinefield store fueled a record-breaking day of sales for the rebuilding exchange. Everything that we've been able to put onto the floor has, has already gone. The nonprofit's deconstruction crew removed the items in late February, coordinating with Northwestern each step of the way. Some things we just take that others still want to keep. And for this particular project, there's a lot of just parties involved. Zach Scher with the Rebuilding Exchange tells me the nonprofit has sold over 250 items from Ryan Field, these section signs being among the most popular. But he also notes that this sale is about much more than finding new homes for some old helmets and seat backs. Through the partnership with Northwestern, we're able to educate people that deconstruction is an option and hopefully they'll consider it next time they're redoing their kitchen or redoing their bathroom. But finding a use for old materials is just one part of what Rebuilding Exchange does. They're also helping train people looking to get a start in the construction industry. You could just start from nothing and rise to the occasion. With Northwestern promising that 35% of all construction jobs in the new Ryan Field project will go to minority and woman-owned businesses, the university's $200,000 investment in the rebuilding exchange could be key to making that promise a reality. We're setting people up for opportunities to actually be a part of that construction project. In Evanston, Logan Skijano, Northwestern News Network. 
Thanks, Logan. While very few items remain on sale through Rebuilding Exchange, Northwestern's NIL collective, True in You, will be holding another sale and auction later this year, with those proceeds going to NU athletes. This year, Ramadan, a religious holiday observed by Muslims, overlaps with finals week. It's brought some controversy with some Muslim students who say they are struggling to balance their religious traditions with school policies. University policy says instructors should make every reasonable effort to aid students observing religious holidays. With Muslim students having to wait until sundown to eat, some are experiencing stress and concern about meals conflicting with exams. Some students have asked for breaks during exams, but have been told they'll need to eat during their finals. Ramadan begins this year on March 10th, and finals week begins March 11th. Actor and comedian Katherine Hahn will be this year's commencement speaker. Here's what she said during the announcement. I'm going to be your commencement speaker this year. Ta-da! The university announcing that award-winning actor, who graduated in 1995, will address the class of 2024 in June. The announcement first came during their senior class formal on Saturday. Now, this year marks the first year that commencement will not be held at Ryan Field since 1929. Han will also receive an honorary doctor doctorate degree alongside Arthur, author David Barstow, scientist David Reitze, and Katrina Adams, the former head of the Women's Tennis Association. On this early morning, let's get a check on the latest weather with NNN's Micah Sandy. Micah? Saturday will be mostly cloudy throughout the day with a new moon coming in at night. We'll be going from 44 to 29 from day to night though, so don't make evening assumptions based on the morning weather. We'll be welcoming back the sun Sunday with less wind at night after mostly sunny skies. We're also approaching later sunset thanks to daylight savings time. Mondays are Mondays, but you should look forward to this one. We're back to the 50s with complete sun throughout the day and a less chillier evening. Tuesday and Wednesday will both be cloudy and about the same, but we will leap back up to 60 degree weather. Expect some occasional showers Wednesday night, and although Thursday will have the same temperatures, expect it to be a rainy day. Really setting the tone for finals. Next Friday, you can expect a high of 56 and a low of 40. Cloudy throughout the day with a 40% chance of rain. Some minor winds, but nothing too bad. And that's all from me. Stay warm, cool, dry, however the weather is going. And best of luck on your finals. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Micah, for the forecast. Coming up, taking a look at Evanston's first Saturdays, a whole day affair displaying local art and exhibits. One, two, three, four. I'm Kelly McEvers, founding host of the NPR podcast, Embedded. I'm James Edwards, host of the Unresolved podcast from Frontline. I'm Antonia Cerejido, former senior producer of Anything for Selena podcast and current executive producer at Elias Studios. Welcome back to NNN AM. As spring quarter approaches, it's almost time for one of Northwestern's time-honored traditions, Dance Marathon. NNN's Mila Branson spoke about new changes taking place this year. The annual Northwestern Dance Marathon is just around the corner. I'm Mila Branson, and today I'm here with Dance Marathon Operations Director Kelsey Norton and Public Relations Chair Callie Morgan to get an inside look at the event. So I know that I'm definitely excited to be dancing during the event this year. 
What can dancers look forward to for new features this, in the Dance Marathon? So we have made a lot of changes this year, which we're really excited about. Um, we're going to be at Welsh Ryan Arena um, the first weekend of spring quarter um, for 15 hours. So it'll be 8 p.m. Friday to 11 a.m. Saturday. Um, there's going to be a lot of dancing, a lot of fun games. We have um, student performers come. Um, we have a lot of snacks and food. Um, it's definitely a really, really busy 15 hours, um, which will be a lot of fun and we're really excited. Sounds great. So 30 hours is what the length has been in the past. Why was it cut down to only 15 this year? Yeah, so we um, sent out a student survey at the end of Dance Marathon last year, um, just asking students for feedback on the event, any you know changes they would like to see made, um, what would make them stay longer or be more likely to come. Um, and that was a big thing that we saw. Um, that was another reason why we also changed the timing of the event because it used to be, it actually would have been this past weekend. So um, kind of right in the middle of reading week and final season. Um, so a lot of the changes that we made this year are kind of grounded in that feedback. Definitely, that's great that you're listening to students. So how many students will be attending the event this year? Um, right now we have 800 registered dancers or above that number. So um, that's, that's what we know, but we're really excited for, for everybody to come out. That's a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> so this year your beneficiary is Ronald McDonald House. How much money have you raised for them so far and through what events? Um, I'm not sure exactly. We don't reveal the number until the actual marathon. Um, but we've had a ton of fundraising events uh, throughout the year. Um, so in the fall, we had a 5K run. Um, we also have a gala um, for our alumni and our um, donor community in the fall. Um, and then actually right now, we're kind of in the middle of this 15 for 15 fundraising push where we're hosting 15 events leading up to the marathon. Um, so we hosted some trivia events last week. Um, we just had a basketball tournament on Sunday, which was a lot of fun. Um, we did a blind date for a book sale or blind date with a book fundraiser in Norris um, once in winter quarter and once in fall quarter. Um, so we've had a ton of different ways for students to get engaged um, and also help fundraise um, throughout the year. That's really great. So I know I'm definitely looking forward to listening to some Taylor Swift during the event, <laughs> but how do you choose the music? That's a pretty long playlist for 15 hours. Yeah, um, in the past we've actually worked with one DJ for the whole 30 hours, but this year to help increase the diversity of the music we have and better reflect our students, we're actually switching it up a little bit. So we're gonna have a professional DJ for a few of the hours and the rest of the time is gonna be filled with student DJs. So we do not playlist it. Um, they'll be getting to choose their own set lists um, for the hour that they perform the student DJs. And then we're also gonna have student bands and acapella groups come in and perform. And the drum line for marching band is a classic morning wake up performance for Dance Marathon. Thank you guys so much for coming in today. Now sending it back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Mila. Registration is still open for Dance Marathon. Check it out on their Instagram at NUDM. And just because it's reading week doesn't mean there isn't on-campus entertainment. The annual dance show, Dance Works, is back. Emergence is the theme for 2024, featuring a series of dances said to bring something powerful. The 90-minute showcases features new works from NU faculty with NU student performers. It plays Friday through Sunday in the Josephine Lewis Theater. And Wonder Boy, a new musical, is coming to Northwestern. The musical following the story of a transgender man becoming a superhero and saving a college campus. The musical will take place on Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are $10 for the public, $8 for students, and can be purchased through the Northwestern website. From right here on campus to just downtown, NNN Sabrina Carson takes us on a chalk downtown, showcasing some participating studios, stores, exhibits, and artists. First Saturdays, a recurring event on the first Saturday of the month, offer Evanston businesses and artists a unique chance to share their work with the community. We want to create a monthly event, really, where people just can engage with artists, fun and easy, and it's really finally taking off. This monthly showcase, sponsored by local arts group Evanston Made, and offers participants a self-guided tour of Evanston art locations. Our whole mission is to bring visibility and opportunity to the artists in our community. Galleries studios, and shops around the city. 
opening their doors for several different art-related initiatives. We are proud to showcase their work to the community. Sarita Kamat, Artem Gallery owner and artist, displays many local artists downtown. Kamat feels these monthly events spark interest in Evanston's art community. Events like First Saturdays or, you know, they help us drive traffic to the store. While some galleries merely show off their artist's work, others, like Studio 3 behind me, offer courses in different mediums, like gel painting. I did teach the little kids a day. Studio 3 is a studio and gallery elevating work from artists of all backgrounds, like Anthony Clark. I love it. I had a good time, and I'm very happy. Sharing community through art, one brushstroke at a time. Sabrina Carson, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Sabrina. First Saturdays will continue throughout the spring. Northwestern athletics are heating up with winter regular season sports drawing to a close and spring sports seasons hitting their stride. And two Wildcat squads dealt with some surprises. We can't talk about spring sports without mentioning the Northwestern lacrosse team because they're on fire. And after defeating then number one ranked Boston College in their Sunday, mat their Sunday matchup with Central Michigan proved to be historic too. Graduate student Izzy Skane became the program's leading scorer all time with a second quarter goal and her running mate Aaron Koikendall nabbed her 300th point with a second quarter assist. The Lake Show now stands at 5-1 on the season. And as one group starts their season with a bang, the Northwestern men's basketball team is working to survive to the end of their season, despite big injuries. Taking on Michigan State on Wednesday without guard Ty Berry and center Matt Nicholson, the team was hoping the return of Ryan Langmore could propel them to a miracle in the mitten. It was a competitive game with the Cats having a shot to tie with just over nine seconds remaining. However, Langborg's three did not land and the Cats fell 49 to 53 and dropped to 11 and eight in Big Ten conference play. The team's next matchup is this Saturday at home against Minnesota. The senior night matchup is a must win game for the Cats to ensure that they can get back into March Madness. That would be the first time back to back in program history. And it's been 76 days since Northwestern football's victory in the Las Vegas Bowl. But some Wildcat stars aren't ready to call it quits just yet. Northwestern hosted Pro Day on Wednesday and quarterback Ben Bryant, wide receiver Cam Johnson, and linebacker Bryce Gallagher all got the chance to run through drills in front of scouts from 29 of 32 NFL teams. Now, while all eyes were on the trio of cats, head coach David Braun also talked to reporters for the first time in 2024. He was peppered with questions on a wide variety of topics, including the new hires to his coaching staff, the impact of NIL on recruiting, and the future of Wildcat home games. While no official announcement has been made as to where the Cats will play their home contests while the new Ryan Field is under construction, Braun says his team will be prepared for whatever comes their way. What I can say is regardless of where that venue's at, I have to do a great job of making sure our team's ready and, and we need to make sure we do a great job as a university of, of, of including everyone in that, making sure that it's a great game day experience, a gr it's a great experience for our students. And, and everyone that's involved. Northwestern's Pro Day participants now wait to see if their names get called during the NFL draft, which begins April 25th. It's time to get cooking with in ns resident chef, Aria Wozniak. Aria, what are you preparing this morning? Good morning, I'm Ari, and this is Ari's Kitchen. Today I have with me my sous chef, Kunjal. So as student chefs, we have to wake up really early in the morning. That's why we chose to make coffee cake today. So we're making coffee cake this morning and we're going to start off by greasing the pan. To make the streusel topping, you'll combine the ingredients as seen on the screen. Mix until it looks like breadcrumbs. For our coffee cake batter, we're adding two cups of all-purpose flour. 3 fourths cup of white sugar, 2 teaspoons of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. And now we're adding our butter. <laughs> and now we're going to pop it in the mixer. Then you're going to add your egg, some milk, 
and vanilla. <laughs> and now you pour the wet ingredients into the dry ones. Now you're going to pour your batter into your pan. And then you're gonna pour your streusel on top. Now you just pop it in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes. And that's how you make coffee cake. We hope you enjoyed. We made this from scratch and with love. You know, I, a little birdie told me that our news director actually makes his baking stuff out of a box. So it's kind of fake baking, if you ask us. We would never do that though, as authentic bakers, this is what homemade looks like over box made. With love from Ari's Kitchen. That coffee cake looks absolutely delicious. Thanks, Aria, and bon appetit. Coming up, get a glimpse of some hidden talents some NNN members have up their sleeves. Ready, set, nano! A typical class quarter will include the average science class, the required major classes, and possibly a weeder. But there shouldn't be a reason not to add a unique class that might even be fun. I've scrolled through Caesar, done some hearing through the grapevine, and have selected a few classes you may want to consider. If you find yourself making frequent trips to Welsh Ryan Arena or otherwise on the edge of your seat when the Wildcats or other college teams are on the road, the history of college sports might be for you. An introductory level class in the history department, it can be an entertaining way for sports fans to either learn more about the sport or consider a history major or minor. Finally, who says love can't be in the air past Valentine's Day? An open class you could sign up for right now is the History of Western Marriage. An introductory seminar for history and non-history majors alike, this class will teach you the ins and outs of societal perceptions of marriage in addition to the significance of marriage licenses throughout time. Be sure to check Caesar to see if any of these classes still have space. Max. Taking it downstairs to the Shepherd basement, NNN's very own Ananya Chug and Kunjal Vastola are here to spill the tea on the latest Northwestern pop culture news. Ananya and Kunjal? Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to Northwestern Natter, coming at you from the Shepherd basement. I'm Ananya Chug. And I'm Kunjal Vastola. We start off today talking about a recent study that was created by the Stanford by Stanford and the University of Maryland saying that gossip is actually healthy for you. No way. One hour of gossip a day, you'll be a pretty healthy person. <laughs> well, we'll be pretty healthy then. Well, well sure. starting off today strong, Northwestern recently announced the commencement seeker for this year's graduating class. 
Katherine Hahn is an alumni. So what are your thoughts, Kinjal? Oh, I love her. She's absolutely hilarious. For anyone who's watched WandaVision, oh my god. Like, she is amazing. The plot twist at the end, so good. Um, and I, I saw the announcement in which she did a little, like, sarcastic reveal of the mm -hmm. fact that she's going to be commencement speaker mm -hmm. and receiving an honorary degree, and I think it's a great choice. To be honest, I haven't watched much of her movies, but she was great in Spider-Man, so, you know, that's all I can say for that. Well, yeah. But speaking of alumni, I was walking into the sorority house the other day, and I saw, like, you know, the composite pictures are on the wall, and I saw something so surprising. Maude Apatow <laughs> was on one of the pictures. She actually attended Northwestern and was in Tri Delta Sorority. And speaking of which, her co-star on Euphoria just did a movie, Anyone But You, and they're comparing it to, you know, all the great rom-coms of the time. So what were your thoughts on the movie, Kajal? Well, my thoughts. I think that it should not be compared to the greatest rom-coms of all oh, time. Oh, really? Why is that? Well, I heard people were comparing it to um, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't see the rom in this rom-com like i just did not think they had enough chemistry right so th that's my hot take but what about you no i didn't think it was enough of a build-up to call it like an actual love story you know what i mean like they didn't really like they had like a meet maybe like two like years ago or something like that but like in that short period of time on the weekend it wasn't enough build-up for me i'm not gonna lie no. but i did like that it was set in australia beautiful yeah. setting so yeah no good. you've been traveling a lot this year you well, went yes. to australia winter break you were in dc in the fall well yes i was at moth medill on the hill mm -hmm. and i heard you're going i am so are you excited i'm so excited oh my goodness oh, yeah. i'm so excited for all the restaurants you know like the scene and to do work in like in big city like that's really gonna be amazing well, i'll have to send you my restaurant racks yes will you give me a few now <laughs> put me on the spot wait <laughs> i don't have any um Compass Coffee, okay. coffee shop, amazing, so okay. good. Um, Dua DC is another coffee spot. Um, oh, Karen, if you like Ethiopian food, it's Ooh. so good. It's in DuPont Circle, so I do close like to where the Medill building is, ish. Okay, yeah. I'll keep that in mind. And as for like you know classes, professors, what, what are your like recs for that? Well, PJ is great. Okay. So is Matt. Okay. Um, Fennett, amazing. Everyone's everyone's great. They're all great professors. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to love the people that you go with, mm -hmm. and yeah, you're going to have a great time. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Back to you at the studio. Thanks, Kunjal and Ananya. Keep us updated on more fun details. It is now time for the magnificent, magical portion of the morning. Max, I hear you are a pretty good magician. What do you have for in store for us? Well, I try to be. I do have a deck of cards here. So we're going to go ahead and pull them out of the pack and give them a quick shuffle so that they are mixed. Okay. And now I'm gonna riffle through them and I want you to tell me to stop and try and get about halfway. Okay. Stop. Right there? Sure. More, less, or stay? Uh, more. More? Okay, stop. Right there? Yep. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing again. Tell me when to stop whenever you'd like. Stop. Right there? Yep. You sure? Yep. Okay. <laughs> And then we're going to do the last pile right here. Tell me when to stop whenever you'd like. Stop. Right there. Yep. You sure? Yeah. Okay. So if you got them even, there would be 13 cards in each pile because okay. there's 52 cards in a deck. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. Good job. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. Okay, so 13, 4, and 7, how many are in this file? Out of 52? Yeah. No, it's I, okay. I, I, you never we'll I'm confirm. not a math major, Max. It's I'm 1, <laughs> 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Okay. You can check my math on that. Okay. That is 52. Okay. What you didn't realize that you did is you put a jack oh. on top of all four piles. Wow. But you also put a queen on top of all four piles. You also put a king on top of all four piles. And since it's the morning show, we got to finish with four aces. Wow. And the rest of the cards are shuffled. Very impressive. Great job. Oh my gosh. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> well, that's the goal, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for this morning. I'm Lena Peterson. And I'm Max Rothbetter. Thanks for tuning in to In and In All Winter Quarter. We'll be back in the spring. Have a great day.